one, Brown and Feeney. Row two, Mostert and Hill. Teams, drivers, engineers, sponsors, they've all realigned in the quest to be number one. The 2024 championship is wide open and gets underway. And what a start. They are three wide into turn one. Brown has the ascendancy through the first turn. Mostert is making a big argument of it. And in the background, Wood's gone off and is out in the gravel and parked up and staying there. And this will be a safety car. And Mostert got the best start by a mile. He had nowhere to go. He was jammed in behind the two Red Bull Camaros. He got a brilliant start but had nowhere to go. So they've gone full course yellow. Here's what happened off the start. So watch the second row of the grid in the white car. Chas Mostert makes a great conversion, but Mark picked up on the fact there was nowhere to go. And that was really a break for Cam Hill on the outside. Brown was looking pretty strong here through the first corner. But uh, Chaz ended up in the wrong position on the run up towards turn two. Now on board now with Ryan Wood. So he made a reasonable start. A lot of wheel spin. James Courtney fired down the inside. Now he's caught three abreast. He gets a bump from the inside. He bumped from the outside. Now I think it was a new line car on the right. So I think that's Slade. But it didn't pick up who was on the inside. Green flags round the circuit. Will Brown in control from Brock Feeney. Cam Hill tucked in behind. All three of these guys have had some fantastic battles in junior categories over the years. Sitting in fourth position is Chaz Mostert after a vigorous start from him. Right here is where the trouble unpacked 200 odd metres into the race at the very commencement. So they'll have got a little bit of temperature and pressure into tyres. Perhaps been able to cycle a little bit of temperature into brakes, but still won't be optimised at the moment as they have to go for maximum attack over the top of the hill. Hit, hit. Yes. Okay, so they're bringing no Will in. And he's lost a bit of that margin, just a tiny little bit. You can see it on screen, and in he comes. So our race leader takes the first of his two compulsory stops, Will Brown. Brand new outfit for him in 2024, and he's already got some numbers on the board with a great start with a pole position and a good opening stint for him. Got it off the line cleanly, so lots of boxes ticked. Come all the way down. You're going to have to go around those big boys. So, this is going to be an interesting pit stop, isn't it? And I'm going to watch this with great interest all year. No safety car today, but tell you what, how they strategize these two cars to not have calamity in pit lane is going to be hard. Now, let's have a look. We've got four tyres out on the lane here. Are we going to do four tyres? One, two, three, four, five, six. OK, about six seconds of fuel. So again, we're seeing the same amount of fuel go in as the tyre stop. If you come around the back here, let's have a quick look at his fuel load. And you will see up here is the marker. There's the 500 mil mark. There's 80 litres, uh, 60 litres, sorry. So you can see, just come down. There's six seconds of fuel. That's what it looks like in what they've got to do overall. And uh, awkward lock up down here as well and off the road. Unfortunately for Matt Payne Larko. Yeah, well, I was really keen to see how much fuel they just put in Feeney, and it was only a really quick drop. So I'm going to quickly run around the back here because I was interested to see are they going to try and ship him out in front or behind of Will Brown? Have a look. Here you go. You can see it yourself. No, nope, a little bit more than I thought. Yeah, I hear you. Still neck and neck, though, isn't it? It's a pretty intense battle between these fellas. Oh, and contact with the fence there for Aaron Love. Oh, that that's... has hit the right hand rear. And it's snaking its way across the top now. He'll be just trying to get it back to the pit. But this could be a safety car, depending upon whether it can get it back or not. This will serve the whole... This will be the whole field. And, yeah. and you can see them laying up. But then now the challenge here, though, if we do end up with a full course yellow or some form of safety car intervention, who do and how do they react? Well, they're reacting straight away with Will Brown. They're taking it right now. That's clever. Straight away. So they needed to separate those two so in order not to penalise the other. Oh, and oh. he's just able to manage control of this car at the moment. So Tim Blanchard, the Blanchard Racing Team, he and his dad, John, have invested heavily. They've got more than 800 people in that family-owned business. They've gone to two cars this year. Will Brown is in. Hazelwood's in. Heimgartner's in. Oh, well 
Oh, jeez. It looked close. It mightn't have been as close as we thought, but it looked like it was close. So, oh, it's ha happened on the approach up to the cutting. And he's given it a fair thump up there. Not the first, and he won't be the last to do that. And so it means he's got to do almost three quarters of a lap to get it back into the pit lane. And so a bunch of people have reacted to that now and brought cars in. Benny's got 27 seconds over Burkhardt at the moment. Will Brown's up into third spot. And then it's Chas Most at Cam Waters, Richie Stanaway. Now there's a mix and match of one and two stops in all that. So Brock's yet to take his final stop. Nick Burkhardt hasn't taken hasn't taken his final stop and we're about to tick the box now for the race leader for Brock. So in and done with 12 remaining. And remember that Percat ran much, much longer and has a fresher tyre and he's been making some benefit from that. We're going back up to the other end of the racetrack here at Forest Elbow to see where Will Brown is and how he's progressing and how it references this car on the left. Good communication as always. straight now for the other car. Not much in it, and which is exactly what we expected. So, Feeney in front of Brown, but with a cold tyre. Will Brown with his head down, fully motivated. Maximum attack for him, qualifying spec. And he's just done a very quick time. In fact, so's Mostert. Mostert's gone quick over the top of the hill again. That's been the pattern of the day. What's he done? A two minute 8.3. Feeney's got the 8.2 against his name. So this is going to be interesting because the next half a lap, this margin will continue to crush down a little bit. Uh, uh, Cam Waters just talked about a tyre coming off. So is that, has that come off the rim? Yep. Oh, oh well, we, that's a it's full, a wheel. It's a full it's, wheel off. Yeah. Okay. Now, so this, this might serve Mostert well. If this ends up rolling into a spot where the safety car is deployed, then that parks Mostert right behind those cars in front, and he went faster again. 8.07 on the last lap. This is turn two, so it's making its way backwards from turn three cutting area and hopefully out of harm's way. There's 20 kilos rolling down the road there and there are cars coming. So they'll be on the radios to the drivers because you do not want to wear this. Remember what happened to Lowndes oh, a few years oh, ago. Oh. Now it's online. Oh, oh nice, nice job. work. Nice, nice work, Chazzy. But there's still more to come. So hopefully this thing just ends up in the... And there's radios alive everywhere. And uh, dangerous, awkward situation here. So long as it stays on the outside of the road and everybody's aware, but you just never know where it's going to bounce. So has it now stopped? No. Oh, my goodness. This is not good. This is not where you want it. Full oh. cross yellow. Well, they had no okay. choice. No. Uh, unfortunately, the damn thing's just stopped there. I thought it was on its way back to the pit garage. <laughs> but uh, they've gone full course yellow. So here's the replay of what's happened. And uh, yeah, left front, it's just parted company halfway up to turn three. And I reckon I've just picked him up on the radio in the cutting. Uh, how lucky for Chaz Mossett to avoid oh. that. So remember that Craig Lowndes wore a wheel and tire right in that spot several years ago. And uh, luckily it just pulled up to a stop at the top of Mountain Straight there. And, didn't end up thumping into a car. Geez, they've had an ordinary weekend so far, these guys, haven't they? So I just heard Aaron Love apologise to the team, and now I know why. No, it's done. I'm so sorry. Fuck, I owe you guys the world. I'm so, so sorry. What do they do in race control? 
How are they going to manage it now? What impact is it going to have at the sharp end of this motor race? Aaron Love has parked up at the top of the hill in an awkward spot. That's a cool shot to give you an idea of what it all looks like on the surface of the road. Oh my goodness, on the run to turn one, we're going to compress this field. Here's what's happened to Aaron again. Unfortunately, whacking the wall so significantly this time that he didn't get away with it. Wow. And that uh, has claimed some pretty big names over the years. I can recall Larry Perkins. I can recall Jamie Wincup. I can Peter recall Brock. James Courtney, Peter Brock. There's been a number of people that have been caught in that location. Uh, so this is going to make it victory number seven here for Brock Feeney in his career and the first, obviously, of 2024 with a beautiful drive today. And uh, great arm wrestle between the two teammates, between Will Brown and Brock Feeney. And uh, impressive speed being shown by Chaz Mostert, so we can look forward to him getting in the game. Checkered flag, job done. Red Bull and Pole Racing for Brock Feeney and for Will Brown. Anticlimactic conclusion to that one, unfortunately, in safety car conditions. Have a look at our race results now for our first event of the championship season. Event one, Repco Supercars Championship, Thrifty Bathurst 500. Great job, Brock Feeney. Maximum points today, tiny margin, obviously, at the end as he trickled across the line from his teammate, Will Brown. But they were the dominant force today when it mattered throughout that 40-lap race. Chas Mostert, though, a lot of encouragement there, was continuing to close down. Richie Stanaway, Mark and I talked about coming back from the bruise. Then Cam Hill, awesome performance. They are down in the Pertec victory lane to open their accounts for 2024 and pretty relaxed. Brock Feeney just climbs out of the car and uh, that looked like it was all pretty much straight out of the textbook.